so this is part two of a video uh, that I captured here around about two weeks ago except it's not quite part two this is part three let me explain So in the first episode, I came here and I tried to do a vlog and I knew the weather was going to be slightly slightly tough or the conditions were going to be slightly tough to work in but I decided to come anyway. I pre-planned it for, well, for quite some time. So I came and it's probably the first video I've shared on my channel whereby I feel I didn't take good pictures but hey ho, um, because of the weather conditions that's just the way it is sometimes so I thought I would share that experience with you if you haven't seen the video by the way I'll leave a link up there but so as not to be outdone and with gritted teeth I came back the following day and all the stars had aligned the uh, tide times were perfect compared to the sunrise times yep I traveled all the way back it was going to be windy but not so rainy of course the wind conditions are usually quite good because they'll create swells swells will create waves blah 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 anyway I came back and in disaster struck once again aha nightmare I can't have this place beat me twice I just can't so just to put things into perspective um, I was on holiday with the family in the northeast coast of England uh, this week I uh, was away camping with the whole family we go pretty much three times a year and uh, hence the reason I didn't put any content out last week but throughout the whole time of uh, my holiday I kept thinking about how this place has beat me twice and we arrived back home late last night and up first thing this morning I came straight back here another two and a half hour drive here another two and a half hour drive back and this is my third time if I don't take any, any good pictures today I'm just going to scrap the place I'm just going to tell you it's rubbish for photography and I'm going to advise that you guys never ever come here ever 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 <laughs> and of course that's not true um, in case you didn't know where I was or where I am today I'm at Spurn Point which is the northeast side of England just Google Spurn Point and you'll find out exactly where I am right now and I am so looking forward to hopefully beating this place I really hope so that's the story that's the backstory let's get on with it hi guys and welcome to this week's video okay so let me give you a timeline it's three o'clock right now high tide is at seven o'clock and um, sunset is at eight o'clock I'm on the east coast of the UK as you know so being here for sunset is not uh, likely to be very favorable although sometimes it can be very favorable if it's a clear sky but it's a very overcast day the Sun is pretty much done for the day now I'm led to believe and we're we're due some rain at around about seven o'clock hopefully that'll bring some darker clouds but between now and when the rain comes hopefully I should be able to grab a few shots the wind is roughly about 15 miles an hour so there's not going to be too much in terms of wave action 
Uh, the, the sea's looking fairly calm out there at this present moment in time, but my concentration is really just to rush around, grab two or three, uh, what I consider to be the best locations, and just literally grab them, just so I can tick that box. Because this place, I think the biggest problem with this place is there are too many uh, photo opportunities. They are everywhere. Where do you start and where do you finish? Just trying to keep it really really simple I'm just letting the groins do the talking now the first set of groins that you pretty much come to when you come out to Spurn Point is a small cluster and the front two lean forward the rest are just there in the sea and they look fairly straightforward but they're great from an angle and they're great straight on they just look really really nice so it's really really minimalistic photography and that's pretty much what I'm going for but let me talk you through my camera setup on this one which I pretty much guarantee you will be pretty similar if not exactly the same as all the others and of course the tide's coming right up and coming in really quickly as I speak um, remember it's it's half past three so it's still very bright although I've taken those dreadful those dreadful sunglasses off um, my setup now I'm at ISO 50 f16 and with my 10 stop filter on there that's allowing me to shoot either a one or a two minute exposure and I've got a 0.9 soft grad filter on there as well just to bring some of that light down in the sky but with a minute or a two minute exposure there's wispy clouds in the sky no sun no contrast to talk of we're not going to get much in the way of um, movement within the clouds I don't think we are anyway certainly not over a one minute exposure possibly over a two minute exposure but like I say the idea of this is I want to try and shoot these with a real minimalistic feel and they look fantastic what a great start I've been sat in the car for two hours. I was so excited to come here, let me tell you. I was sat in the car for two hours because when I arrived here, the tide was still going out. That's how keen I was. I've sat in the car all that time. Now I've come to the point where I want to take the pictures. I'm rushing again. How does that even happen? How? So you guys know, when the tide is fully in, if you don't know anything about Spurn Point, possibly tonight with the height of the tide, you get cut off, but you can't walk back onto, when I keep saying the mainland, you can't walk off at Spurn Point. You're stuck here until the tide goes back out again. Remember what I said earlier, the tide is uh, full at the time of sunset. That means I'm probably gonna have to wait, depends on the height of the tide, probably gonna have to wait maybe an hour or so in the complete darkness with the whole place to myself just sat here contemplating about the day and contemplating about this damn challenge now i know i've said this time and time again but when I come to an area where I think there's lots of opportunity, I really, really work my compositions, I really do. Uh, even if sometimes I think I'm not sure whether this will work or not, rather than just contemplate, I just crack on with it. And sometimes I even surprise myself when I get back. I mean, one of my favorite pictures from last year, I, at the time, I really wasn't that bothered about taking it because nothing really, um, there was no spark with the image, shall we say. But I've, le I've, I've, I've since learned to love it and love it so much. It still remains today as one of my favorite landscape pictures. So, so don't be afraid to work at it. I mean, what's the point in coming here and just taking one picture anyway? Take your angles really low down, take your angles really high up. And something like this is a really unusual composition that I'm going for at the moment. Basically, I've got three groins or three whatever they are maybe they were supports for the old road I'm not really sure but anyway three big wooden stanchions 
three is good odd numbers are really good when you photograph them but i also think that the one on the left hand side over there is leaning into the frame which is quite good in terms of rules of thirds the background interest is in between the second and the third post so everything is in odd numbers one two three which makes a natural frame this one on the left hand side as you're looking now leans into the frame and of course so does the background so they could possibly complement each other i'm not really sure but i think it looks quite good this area down here i don't like that so i would tidy that up and really clean that up and remove that rock and everything in post-production i know some of you guys might not like doing that but i certainly do so i look for the end result while i'm stood here if that makes sense get easy to do by the way it's not that difficult anyway that's just how i work you don't have to work like me but rather than come here sit on my lazy backside and just think about what what could be and just get on with it while i sink in that last two minute exposure let me just talk you through my work flow now my work process there's a, a straight line of groins or supports just in front of me here and i think from the beach looking straight out of sea they will look fantastic as well as, as a really minimalistic uh, image but i've got to wait until the sea comes up a little bit further so once that two minute shot is done which is probably up by now then i'm going to move further along the island not too far just a, maybe 100 yards or so look for something else down there maybe grab a shot or two and then come back here like i say when the tide is a little bit higher up an old pier I, I keep saying it but let's just say groins for now groins going out into the water you've got that wood there really really interesting as a foreground especially because there's a slight curve to it as well but look at these posts here i don't know if i could do anything with these posts right now but they just look fantastic oh just look at the detail on these posts i really wish i had my macro lens with me because i'm sure pulling the detail out in those posts there would make for a fantastic image. I found an interesting composition, but it's one that's outside my comfort zone. It's one that I, I, I teach against. In other words, I was going to shoot directly out to sea but there's a plinth that comes right across the screen like that and it creates a barrier and i hate taking pictures like that but i thought go on let's go outside of my comfort zone and let's just give that a go but i still don't like it <laughs> but the way to overcome that is i've moved my camera from the central point which was over here there brought it across here and instead of shooting straight down so we got the groins looking like that I've now simply moved the camera to the right so now the groins move from the top left down into the image itself so therefore the thirds are well and truly maintained and that beam that goes across the image that would ordinarily split the picture up I think I can live with that I think that's a little bit more bearable but yeah really 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 love this picture really love this picture 
Oh, that is nice. That's so nice as a fine art image. It really, really is. So what I'm doing now, I'm just hanging on and waiting until I get my timing right. In other words, I think with the foam of the, um, the waves coming around the bottom of the right and left hand posts that form a nice frame in the image, I think that the white and the foam that appears around there is much nicer and much cleaner than all the pebbles and the dirty sand. Oh, it's just so good. It looks so good in here. The only thing I might have a slight issue with is a little bit of wind and a good focal point is the net that's hanging on one of those um, beams of wood and it's blowing in the wind ever so slightly obviously on a two minute exposure that's going to be a little bit blurred I might leave it to show a bit of drama or I might change it because I've taken a picture with a faster shutter speed so that'll give me the option to change it I don't know I might keep it as it is but it's good to have options by the way, this is something I never ever do, but if you've just happened across this channel, my name's Gary Goff and this is what I do for a living and also I produce uh, videos pretty much on a weekly basis. If you like what you've seen, do me a favour, I never ask for it, but give me a thumbs up because it'll help the channel and subscribe if you're new here. It's all about, I suppose, landscape photography in a positive light. It's all about being positive with your landscape photography. Can't say any more than that. I told you how excited I am about shooting this location. <laughs> the thing is, I've, uh, I've taken a few different compositions, but now I'm probably too late to go down and grab the shot I wanted to get with the, uh, anyway, it didn't really matter. The fact is, this is just brilliant. I grabbed a few shots from low down, now I'm grabbing a few shots from higher up. And the setup is exactly the same. I think I'm at F16, ISO 50, 10 stop filter. The only thing that's any different is I've now taken out my 0.9 soft grad, apart from the fact that it's now starting to rain. Um, yeah, I can't say any more than that. It's just brilliant. I was gonna play around with the shutter speeds a bit more. I like half a second. I like to see a little bit of motion in the uh, in the waves but when it comes to fine art landscape photography as far as i'm concerned this is what it's all about it's about long shutter speed shots it's about flattening that water out now of course you might well disagree that's perfectly fine that's not really a problem uh, it's just one of these gray areas when it comes to fine art photography and of course fine art photography per se is a very gray area so i'm really sorry if you don't like what I consider to be really good because that's entirely your prerogative but yeah this is really 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 nice I do like the higher up perspective as well looking down I'm trying to incorporate the groins on the left hand side as well they're the ones I showed you earlier on with the really nice intricate details um, the one I mentioned that I wish I had my macro lens with me I've incorporated them and before the heavens opens too much I'm just waiting for the tide to come over the fifth groin, which is the one closest to me. And I think I'll probably wrap the day up once I've grabbed this shot. I'm super excited. You know what? I barely scraped this place. I barely scraped it. There is so much. Oh. I think I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna build a house just here. Right guys, that is it. I'm gonna pull a plug. I've really enjoyed this video. Uh, I knew I'd overcome <laughs> the, uh, the woes that Spurn Point has thrown at me. But uh, yeah, I mean, we could have grabbed these shots the very first time that we were here. But unfortunately, uh, as is the case sometimes, it doesn't always work out like that. If you do want to go back, by the way, and have a look at that video, then just click on the box at the end. But right now, I'll show you a little bit of my post-processing work. Sped up, of course, as always. And then I'll show you my favorite images 
from today. Thank you very much indeed, as always. And do me a favor, help support the channel, help make it grow by giving me a thumbs up. And um, yeah, you know, well, you know what to do. I'll catch you on the next one.